Hey guys, Paul Lynn here, talking to you today about some photography. And I know I'm not dressed for it, I'm more dressed for fitness, but that's just because I've been outside all day and it's hot as hell out there. And um, yeah, so I'm dressed for the weather, not for the video, you'll forgive me for that. Anyway, my wife has a swim meet coming up tomorrow and she's going to be competing in 800 meter and medley and 50 meter and I think she's competing in one other thing too. Uh, don't worry, she's got like no concept of her walking out of that thing winning whatsoever. She hasn't been training for it, but she does want to go and just, you know, be a part of the event. So anyway, she asked me to go and shoot a, just a little bit of video and take a couple of pictures and stuff like that. And walking in, um, I already know that this place is a pretty big place. So uh, they're not going to let me get right down there poolside. And I'm going to probably be up in the bleachers or something like that, shooting down. Uh, I've got water. I don't know what kind of reflections I'm going to be dealing with or the lighting situation. So I put together a rig that I want to show you uh, right now to basically prepare me for that. Now, just in case they do let me get up close and personal, I'm going to bring a smaller lens, something like a 2470, something with a little bit wider angle. But assuming the worst, uh, this is what I've got. I've got a 100, 400 millimeter lens. That's a zoom lens. And this is on a, an FX camera. So 35 millimeters. It's not like an APS or something like that, nor is it, you know, medium format or something. I mean, it's, it's a, a big camera, but not a huge camera. Uh, so when I say a hundred to 400, there is no crop factor involved. You don't have to multiply that by 1.5 or 1.7 to figure out what it really is. I'm shooting 100 to 400 and I need a flash that I can have on me or built onto the camera. And I need something that can deliver light. Uh, from the bleachers all the way down into the pool, right? So this is going to have to be a pretty potent flash. Now, speaking of flashes, the typical flash that you're going to see mounted on a camera is, you know, something that looks like this. It's your basic hot shoe mounted flash and Canon makes them, Nikon makes them. You know, they have their flagship flash models that are like $500, $600 a piece. And you think, man, you know, if I got that flash, I could do anything, right? Well, I mean, you know, this is the Godox equivalent of one of those flagship flashes. This is the V862. And, you know, this thing, you know, I mean, it, it's got a guide number of like 59 or something like that. So it's it's good if you're like taking pictures of people at a party uh, and you know you're not trying to create art you're not going to be selling these pictures to somebody you really just need them to be exposed in the dark this will get the job done admirably it's fine um uh, beyond that let's just say Maybe you are shooting during the day, you're outside, but there's a lot of shade, there's a lot of shadows. Maybe the sun is like right on top of your head. And so every time you take a picture of someone, there's a big black triangle on their face from their nose and the shadow that it creates. This as a fill flash, just to fill in those shadows, the sun's providing all the light but this is just kind of giving a little bit of pop to erase those shadows. This is good for that. But I mean to tell you, much as I like this flash, if I'm up in the bleachers shooting down like 100 meters or 200 meters away and trying to get light into the water, this is gonna fail miserably, okay? People are gonna see it popping 
And that's great, but that light really is not going to be getting down to the water and then bouncing back up to give me a proper exposure. Uh, if anything, if I'm in TTL mode and the camera is controlling the potency of this flash, you know, my camera might be kind of tricking itself and thinking, oh man, you know, I'm sending this signal out to that flash, so I'm going to be getting all this light back and come to find out that light never comes back, right? So long story short, I need something more potent than this guy. So what I'm going to do is I've rigged up the Godox AD200 flash uh, right onto my camera rig. So you're going to laugh when you see my camera because this thing is like, I don't know, probably 20 pounds worth of camera to go and take just a couple of pictures and maybe some short video. But even in those worst case scenario, this will get the job done, okay? It might be like shooting a mosquito with a shotgun, but this will get the job done. So check this guy. So check this guy out. Let me go ahead and put on the neck strap just so I don't drop it. This is what I'm going to be shooting with, all right? So we've got this, whoo, I mean, you could, you, could, you could use this for your fitness regimen, right? I mean, this thing is practically like lifting weights, okay? Uh, just the lens itself, I think, is about a two pound lens. Um, just in case I want to record any video while I'm shooting, like, you know, record through the camera while I'm taking pictures. I've got my Atomos Ninja V Plus right here. So even while I'm taking pictures, this will be recording everything I'm seeing through the lens. That's not necessary for tomorrow, but that's a just in case thing. Um, this is that flash I'm talking about. And you can see that is compared, compared to this little guy, you know, if I straighten this thing out, you know, that little camera flash, that's a little tiny flash compared to this AD200. And on top of that, I've got the round head on the AD200, which creates beautiful, beautiful circular flash rather than like those stupid rectangular flashes you see. Uh, those just look so cheap and boxy. I don't like that. If you've got the option for a round flash head, the Godox has even uh, the normal hot shoe flashes. They make their own uh, kind of hot shoe flash with a round head. Oh, nine times out of 10, that is the shape of flash that you want. It's just so much more natural. It, it creates like a little bit of a vignette, even highlighting your subject in the middle with a nice, even amount of darkness around the outside. It's not square and rectangular and boxy. It's just so much better. And uh, the camera uh, that I'm shooting with is my Nikon Z9. This thing has just massive autofocus capabilities. So when I'm shooting from 200 meters away, this camera can detect a human subject in the water swimming and know that it needs to lock on to that person. So a camera like this takes all of the effort out of focusing whenever you're doing something like sports photography or something like that you cannot do any better than the Nikon Z9 for that kind of autofocus scenario. This thing is a monster. Uh, obviously, if you're doing portraiture and things like that, you want to be a little more creative with your focus. And in that case, you're probably going to be in manual focus mode and you know it's a lot trickier scenario. But for anything sports photography or anything even remotely journalistic, you're probably going to be at an aperture that's narrow enough. It's still pretty wide open, but it's going to be something that gives you enough depth of field that you've got some context with your subject. You don't want something like, you know, if I'm shooting a portrait, 
maybe only the eye is in focus and everything else is pretty blurry. And then when you get behind the subject, it's just a complete washout, right? When you're shooting journalistic, you're thinking about... <coughs> <coughs> When you're shooting sports or journalistic or anything like that, you're thinking about apertures from around minimum, I mean, maximum, I would say like, you know, 5.6 and then, you know, around to like F8 or as small as you want, depending on the lighting. Obviously, you need to get uh, a pretty quick shutter speed, so you're going to have a hard time getting a lot of light in if your apertures stop down to F22 or something. So around F5.6, F5.8 for sports or for anything journalistic, that's about as good as it's going to get for you. So uh, with that in mind, uh, this lens and this flash is definitely going to be able to do the job tomorrow. So from the bleachers or from as far away as they want to put me, I'll be able to shoot all the way down into the water and I will definitely be able to get a good exposure. And because of the camera, I won't be stuck, you know, trying to focus and fighting with the autofocus and it's trying to focus on, you know, shimmers in the water and everything else. This thing will handle it. And speaking of handles, uh, you can see I've got all of this kind of rigged together. Uh, I'm using a small rig frame, a cage, which is made specifically for the Nikon Z9. I've got uh, small rigs Atomos cage around this to mount to it. Uh, a small rig mount adapter. Actually, I've got the Atom X mount adapter holding this uh, on here. Uh, I've got a generic lighting adapter that I just grabbed and screwed into the bottom of my flash and I put a hot shoe mount on the bottom of that. And then, a little bit harder to see, but right here in the middle, I have a Godox wireless flash controller. So that is how I'm actually triggering this flash, because you'll see there's no wires going to the flash and it's not mounted on a hot shoe or anything like that. So I'm actually triggering this flash wirelessly. So that's my rig, and I mean to tell you, this is a heavy rig. This is not something you'd want to be standing around holding for long periods of time. But uh, I will be able to get in and get some good shots of my wife at her meet tomorrow. So that's it. That's what I wanted to show you. That's a uh, photography video for today. If you like what I'm doing, by all means, subscribe to my channel so you can keep seeing it and getting more and more and more good stuff. Click like on your way out the door. I will thank you so much for doing so. And I appreciate you watching. Thanks. Really, I mean it. You have a lovely day.